Hello? Welcome to Let's Cook at Home with Ops Official Artist, Lyric Jones. Today, we're going to fry up some chicken legs. I'm going to cook some greens. And I'm thinking maybe some sweet potatoes. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'll know once we get it rolling. So, the first thing I want to do is uh, get my, chick my chicken seasoned up. And today, I'm going to season it with, uh, let's see where we want to go. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't get it cracking without my, uh, my steak seasoning. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. This is what gets the party rocking right here. Steak seasoning. All right. Let's start with that. And I bought a new one. I put it in a different container. I keep, I'm going to keep this. But I bought it from a... Oh, that smells so spicy and tangy. Oh, it's making my mouth water already. Hold on. Let me just go ahead and get this seasoned up real quick. This has big balls of crack. Well, it's not even cracked yet. It's black pepper. I don't even think that's going to stick. But we're going to give it a little mash and put that in there. I'm going to add a little bit more because that's what makes it thing right there. Alright, and then we're going to add in a little lemon pepper. Quite a bit. Because I'm going to let this sit for a minute before I uh, fry it up. And we're going to add in what else? That may be all I need. Because that's safe. Steak seasoning is something else, so well let's go ahead and add in a little parsley flake, just because. How about that? Let me do the wide side. Just because we can. How about that? And I'll add in just a little olive oil. And that's it on that. Okay. And we just want to move this around in there and make sure every piece seasoned up. So we just have four nice size um, fresh chicken legs. Alright. And that's all I'm going to do with that. Okay. So we're just going to let that sit for a minute. And while I have let this sit, I'm going to go get my greens washed and uh, get my vegetables and everything together. Be right back. Okay. Now it's time to cut up our greens. And these greens, I guess they thought they were doing me a favor by cutting all the little stems off. Because you know I like the stems. But as I was washing these, I noticed that they didn't have any stems on them. So they cut them all off. So what we're going to do is just jump right in it now. So I'm just going to take a few of them. And uh, if you've never washed greens before, and I know I've done another video where I cook greens, but um, just in case you didn't go back and see that one, you just want to make sure they don't have any dirt or sand or, you know, or any, uh, you know, black blemishes and signs of rotten. That's what you want to tear that off. Uh, but typically, like I said, I usually cook my stamps, but since they're not on here, uh, you can go back to the other video and see if you ever buy greens with stems how to cook those. Um, but these, since they're already cut, we're just going to go ahead and get to it. So they've been washed, and I'm just going to uh, hit them up, get some of that water off of them, because um, you all know how I feel about fluoride. So I just want to make sure I get them, get that off of there. I won't get it all off, but some is better than getting off enough. So I'm just going to just run the paper towel across them and randomly just go through and just wipe, wipe a little bit of it off. That's all. Okay, and that's it on that. So what we're going to do next is just roll them up. And I guess it would help too if I turned on the fire. I'm good for trying to not turn on the fire and cook something. I don't think those two things work. So let's turn the fire on. And we're going to roll it. 
and we're just going to cut them into strips. So they'll look like this. Okay, and they may be a little longer, but you just you just want to strip. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do is just cut those up just like that. And that's it. They just strip. And you just pick them up and put them in. That's it. Like I said, I don't add water to my green. Um, because the greens already have water. So you just roll. Again, if you miss it, just roll it. And just cut them into thin strips. It makes it easier to eat. Alright, so I'm going to finish this up. I'm not going to make you suffer and watch me cut greens. So, that's all I'm going to do is just continue to cut these up until I get them all in the pot. I'm going to mash them up. In between here, matter of fact, I'm not. What I also do, I'm going to go ahead and do this too. I'm going to add in one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. So in between me smashing them in here, I uh, season them up a little bit. Here is one table teaspoon of uh, sea salt, and I'm just going to hit that in between there like that. And then this is another uh, teaspoon of, this is a half a teaspoon of uh, rosemary. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in just a little bit. Not a whole lot, because I'm going to come back and add vegetables to that that will already be seasoned. So, I'm going to continue this process, and I'll be right back. Okay. Now we're ready. I got all the greens smashed up in the pot. Uh, I put a picture so you will know that all the greens won't fit in there at once. Um, comfortably. You got to smash them in there and then just go ahead and put the top on them. As they cook down, the lid will go down. Okay, so you don't have to think, oh, I got too many greens. You can never have too many greens. But they will cook down. So you just go ahead and put the lid on there. So what we're going to do next, I have my cast iron skillet. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a little olive oil. Because what we're waiting for is for those greens to cook down a little bit because I'm going to add in uh, two turkey tails and then I'm going to saute some vegetables to add to that. And that's how our flavoring and everything is going to get in there. But first, in order for them to fit, we got to let the greens cook down a little bit. Okay? So I don't have the fire on just yet. Let me, uh-oh, hold on. Let me bring our candle over. If any of you missed it before from one of the other videos, one of our uh, viewers let us know that if you light a candle while you cut onions, the, uh, the onions won't make your eyes water. And it actually works. So I did the test and it works. So now when you see me, when I have to cut onions in a large quantity, I will light the candle from now on. So we're going to uh, cook by candlelight, so to speak. So let's do this. Now, you know what, I decided that I'm going to uh, use this whole garlic clove, so I am going to go ahead and turn my fire on, and I'm just going to sit the whole thing in there. I'm not going to peel it, I'm not going to do any of that, I'm just going to sit the whole thing in there, and I'm going to sit it with the, the, uh, this, the rough part of it, so you got the top, and then you have the bottom of it. I'm going to sit it on the on the bottom and I'm just going to sit it in there and let that roll while we cut the rest of the vegetables up. So I uh, have a jalapeno here and I keep my jalapenos in the freezer until I, I need them. So what I'm going to do is just cut this one right in half. I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to use the end of the spoon to just get out, see that the seeds and the, and the, the white 
membrane on the inside, I want that out. So I'm just going to use my spoon and pull that right out. See that? It came right out. Let's see if it'll do it again. If not, just take your spoon, take the end of it, and it'll come right out. See that? So there's still a little bit here, but I'm going to keep that because that's got a little heat to it. So I, I want that. So I'm just going to cut that into strips. Like that. Alright, and I'm going to put these over in my bowl. Move the jump bowl. Alright, and then I also bought, well these were carrots that I had. I want to make sure I use these up because I don't want them to go bad. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump in that whole, well I guess it was half a bag of shredded carrots. And then I bought some radishes. I was in the mood for radishes. And um, I ate a couple of them last night. I fixed a nice size burger. It was a big monster burger. And uh, I just peeled a couple of radishes and sliced them. And I add them to my burger or I eat them, slice them and just eat them. They got a nice crunch to them. But I decided that I'm going to go ahead and add these to my greens today. And I'm just cutting off the ends. See that? Just cutting the ends off. Because they got that wiggly little tail. And if I stare at it too long, I'll probably be freaked out because it looks like a mouse tail. So uh, I want to hurry up and cut that off. And get them out of my eyesight because they creep me out. Okay, we just cut the ends off because the top has the little stem left of the green that I cut off. I like to, uh, I don't always cook my greens the same. I don't always cook anything the same exact time every time. Uh, the only thing you'll be guaranteed is that it's going to be delicious. But I uh, use what I have sometimes, and sometimes I use what's in season. And um, for whatever reason, I have a taste for radishes. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put these on the side because I'm going to rinse those off before I add them to the bowl. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this onion by candlelight. Cut the ends off. From what I'm understanding is that men are starting to watch my videos. And uh, I want to make sure that I explain things and show certain things. Because a lot of men don't know how to cook at all. Just like there's a lot of uh, females that don't know how to cook at all. And sometimes when I'm doing these videos, like I said, I'm new to this. Um, I skip over things because the videos can get long. If you all haven't noticed, you know, they're an hour. So I'm trying my best to uh, narrow things down without cheating you. But sometimes I just have to go ahead and show because when somebody doesn't know how to do something, they really want to see and they want to know. So all I'm doing now is just cutting my onions. And again, no tears. <laughs> so invest in a, can a candle to cut your uh, your onion, and you'll save yourself tears and tissue. And with me, a lot of cursing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna break these up a little bit. Oh, oh, my garlic back here is. Turn that over a little bit. Move it around. I'm going to turn this fire down, which I should have did in the first place because my olive oil is starting to smoke. I'm not going to take him out. I'm going to leave him in there. I just want to roll him around. I want to roast him, roast the garlic inside of the skin. Okay. 
Okay, we're just going to roll it around a little bit. All right, I'm going to break these, uh, those sliced onions. I just want to pull them apart a little bit. I don't want them all stuck together. Okay. And that's all. I don't have to, you don't have to do every last one of them. Just do a few of them. And then I'm going to add in the rest of my sea salt and the rest of my rosemary. And what else was I supposed to add? Some lemon zest. Let me get that real quick. I don't like to leave my lemons sitting out because then they'll start to turn into mush. And we didn't want that. So I'm just going to hit it up real quick with some frozen lemons. I'm going to hurry up because my skillet is back there trying to burn up on me. Alright, that's good. Oh, my eyes are starting to water. The onion didn't get me, but the damn smoke from the skillet is. So I'm just going to start mix this up real quick. And I didn't forget about my radishes. I'll come back to those. I just got to hurry up and get something in this skillet real quick. Okay, so here we go. Cooking at a good pace. 
this whole meal should take you about an hour. You come in, and uh, and that's if you buy if your meat is not frozen, you know. So you bought your chicken uh, fresh, or you let it thaw out. Season it first, and then go back and wash your greens and get those cut up. Oh, you see they're falling right off. They'll fall right, right off. See that? No skin. It come right off. I seen, uh, I think it was Bobby Flay. He just pinched his and they came shooting out. I'm not ready for all that. But it'll peel right off. Because I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to cut these. I'm just going to leave them, leave them whole. Okay, this one's a kind of small one. But I'm going to continue on with this. And I'll be back. I said, just add them in. Okay. My uh, onion mixture has cooked down. My my onions are translucent. Mm -hmm, yum, yum, yum. And um, what I'm going to do now... I just add in a little butter. About that. Okay. And mix that up a little bit. I had all my little garlics in there. What I also found out is if you pull out that root, that core part of it, then all of them just kind of fall off. Alright, so now I'm going to make room for my vegetables and my turkey tail. So they're cooking down very nice. All right, so I'm just going to make kind of like a a little tunnel in the middle there, if I can. Okay, that's what I want. And I got my turkey tails here. I picked these up today. I went to the market. I got the greens and everything. I may want to cut them. That's why I want my cutting board just to case. Because I started to order just one of them, but then I thought, ah, why not? I may have to. See, if you haven't had them, they, they have meat in there. It's meat and a little fat. I, I cooked these before in a video. But I'm going to go ahead and drop that in and bury him under some greens. Move that over and drop this one in. And bury it under some greens. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. Uh-oh. I just hit the... There we go. Okay. Bury that one over there. And we'll bury that one over there. How about that? Cover them up. And now I'm going to add in my vegetables. The rest of my vegetables to the top. And I'm going to let it cook like this for about Maybe about five minutes, and then I'm going to turn my uh, oil on for my chicken and start to let my chicken fry up. And I'm going to let these greens cook until my chicken is done. I'm going to stir them up a little bit. to want them. So, <laughs> I think I am. I think I'm just going to cook one. Yes, I think I'll do one. So, let me um, 
Get that prepared. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I believe I've done sweet potatoes before. But that's what I'm going to do now. Be back. Hey, our sweet potatoes are softened up from their boils, so I'm going to go ahead and take those out. Now, typically what I do with sweet potatoes is I actually fry them first, or saute them first, and then I put them in my boiling sauce. But because I decided at the last minute, the government wanted sweet potatoes, I had to uh, go ahead and boil them first and give them a head start. So I'm still going to do the saute process, but I had to give them a head start because I'm stacking. <laughs> so let's get these um, sweet potatoes out of here. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to keep the water. Okay, and uh, I would say it's probably a little more than a cup of water, but I'm going to keep it because that's where all the nutrients from the sweet potatoes, all that's in there. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and bring it back to a boil. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on it because I want that to boil up. So in the meantime, I have my skillet on medium high, somewhere in there. So what we're going to do is add in some olive oil. Because we're going to fry these up. And this process will help keep your sweet potatoes from turning to mush. So let's add in a little butter to that. Let me get out, uh, I think I already have my, I have some cinnamon out. I'm looking for some cinnamon in a shaker. That's what I want. But I may not have any. I thought I did, but evidently, I don't. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have to improvise. I just want to dry those off a little bit. Let me see if I have an empty. <coughs> I thought I had an empty shaker in here, but I think I threw it away the other day, calling myself cleaning out my cabinet. And I tossed it. Darn it. <coughs> Alright, so we want this to get nice. And hot. I'm waiting for this last little piece of butter in there to melt. So what I'm going to do while it's doing that is I'm just going to rub a little cinnamon on top of these. Since I can't sprinkle it, I have to improvise. Okay, turn that over. And this was just one large sweet potato. I bought two of them, but I'm just going to cook one today. Alright, so we just rub that in there like that. And we're going to go ahead and put them in face cinnamon side down. I want to try to get these large ones in there first. But you want these soft enough where a knife will go right through it with no problem. Okay. And then you got these two, these little ends that you just shimmy them in there somewhere.
just want to get them all in there. Okay, now my water is boiling. So what we're going to do next, well, I got a cinnamon favorite. I'm going to bring this boiling pot over. I'm going to add in one eighth of a cup of uh, armoretta. We're going to add in one fourth cup of brown sugar. I'm going to add in this is pure vanilla. I'm going to add in a uh, One and a half. That's what I'm looking for. Here it is. That's a tablespoon. Half a teaspoon. That's what I like. Okay, and then we got about a fourth of nutmeg. Add that in. And about, I, I, I would guess this is probably about a half a Maybe a little less than a half a stick of butter. Okay. Then we're also going to add in probably another eighth of honey. And this is just raw, raw honey. I lost the lid. So I'll find it in a minute. Um, oh. Right here. And then we're going to put in, this is, I didn't have any corn syrup, which is cool, but I do have pancake syrup. This is Log Cabin, uh, the original flavor, and it doesn't have any high fructose corn syrup in it. So actually, I probably did better by not having it. So I'm just going to squeeze in probably about another fourth of that. Right, we're gonna get this back on the burner and bring it to a boil. Get that back on. I'm gonna put a lid on it. So I'm gonna bring that to a boil as quickly as possible. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna rotate my sweet potato. Once they get good and brown on this side, we're going to flip them over, and when the uh, sauce mixture starts to caramelize and bubble and it's all sticky and gooey, we're going to add in uh, the sweet potatoes to that, and that's going to give us our sweet potato uh, sauce. So let that roll, and I'll be back once our uh, sauce for the sweet potatoes is ready to add potatoes to it, okay? Be right back. Okay, my sweet potatoes are nice and brown. I just turned the fire off on them, but I also just had another idea. Just because everything in here has enough room, I'm just going to go ahead and add my sauce to this skillet and continue to let it cook in the same skillet instead of putting it in the pot. So I'm just going to move things around just a little bit, and I'm going to cut this fire back on. Sometimes you got, you just got to go with it, all right? I, at the last minute, like I said, I, I decided that I didn't want to do it that route. So let me turn that off. Uh, I, what I also did, too, I went ahead and turned my fire on under my cast iron because it's time to get this chicken going. I turned my greens down to low so they are still cooking but they are on low because I just want to keep everything you know uh, hot and uniform so everything is done around the same time. So let's go ahead and add our uh, sauce mixture. Now it's not completely reduced down not completely. It's getting there. But while it's doing this, I might as well just go ahead and 
pour it on top. And let it finish up in there. Alright, let me immediately put this pan in hot water. Alright, and I'm just going to let it cook with the lid off because I still want this to uh, reduce down some more. Now, if you use a corn syrup, uh, you wouldn't have to wait as long because the corn syrup is already thick uh, in therapy. So all you're doing is just seasoning it. But because I'm actually creating my own, uh, I have to. My process will take a little longer, and it's fine because I still have to fry my chicken up so it can it can cook. But I, like I said, I went ahead and boiled them because I didn't want to take a chance of them still being um, a little too firm. But now I know they're nice and soft. The skin around it will keep them together. And if they fall apart, I'm still going to eat it. <laughs> so let's just let that roll. And I'm going to turn that down to... Uh, I'm going to let it cook on medium. Medium. Once it, the syrup, once it turns into syrup and reduces down for me, then I can go ahead and turn it down on low and put the lid on it. But it's not where I want it yet. Let me get a spoon and show you. See, it's thickening up a little bit. But it's not quite there yet. It's sticking to the spoon a little, but it's not exactly where I where I wanted it. So I'm gonna let that reduce down. Um, our oil for our chicken is warming up. I have a half a cup of whole wheat flour that I'm gonna add to our seasoned chicken now. Okay, and let's get that mixed up. what it looks like. It's cloudy in here because of the plastic. Yeah, that looks nice. That, that looks nice. Let me give it another little shake. That looks nice. So I'll let that sit for a second until this grease uh, gets hot. And we'll drop our chicken in. And uh, it's on. Alright. So it looks like my sauce is reducing to the way I like it. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, baby. Look at that. It's sticking to the spoon. Now it's time. You got to turn it off now because now it's going to turn into a. Uh, you mess around and have caramel sauce. So now we got candied sweet potato. Isn't that lovely? So I turned it off, and I'm going to go in here and get a lid for it. But it's stuck to the to the spoon. Nice. See that's coated front and back. That's perfect. And that's what you want. So I'm going to put a lid on it. Uh, and just let it sit and then I'm going to go ahead and come back and we're going to drop this chicken in this hot grease. You hear that? That means it's ready. I put a few little sprinkles of water in there and now we're going to add in our floured chicken. And these are nice sized legs too. Oh yeah! Look at this. It almost looks like turkey legs, don't it? Okay. And I got one more. This almost not any room in here for him. I have to figure out where he can go. I'm waiting for the bubbles to clear out so I can see. Alright, I see a spot. See a There it is. I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see this. Come on. Come with me. Come with me. See that? See how he's bubbling? That's what you want. That chicken is totally submerged in that oil, so it'll help it to cook uh, all over. So I don't have to flip it and turn it around. 
can just leave it. Um, but I probably will still move it just out of habit. But for right now, at least the first three minutes, just leave it alone and let that crust form on there. You don't want that uh, flour to fall off. So just let it roll. Let's check on our greens. I said I have them on low. They're beautiful. So I may just go ahead and cut those off because I don't want them to stick to the bottom. So let's cut them off. Now what I wanted to do, because I've heard a lot of people say they have a hard time frying chicken because they never know when it's done. This is one of my little indicators that I know when it's done. First, see the chicken has floated to the top. Let me get up. I'm holding the camera and trying to do this. But the chicken is floating, okay, and it's not as loud. Remember when I first put the chicken on and the sizzle was super loud? Hear how quiet it is now? This is when you know that you are nearing completion. It's when that frying chicken gets a little quiet. Okay? So now at this point, I'm ready to take it out and let it sit and continue to cook for another 10 minutes or so. And these were pretty big pieces. But I'm just going to take them out and let them sit on a paper towel and continue to cook and cool down. And then it'll be time to plate it All up. Right. It's the moment we've been waiting for. The chicken is fried up, the greens are done, and the sweet potatoes are done. So I went ahead and uh, cut me a few slices of, of tomato. Let me crack me off on a bear hair. This is a new beer I'm trying out. Uh, it's called Shiner. Uh, I had I bought it yesterday, and uh, I thought it was pretty good. So I want to give it a, another spin today just to make sure that I really like it. But I, I was kind of impressed by it. It's from Sadark Beer. Uh, Made and brewed in Texas, my home state. So I really want to give this a, a fair shake because, you know, I am like a diehard Guinness fan. And I also like uh, my left hand. So this was something that I thought, I thought I'd try it. And uh, like I said yesterday, it was pretty good. But I, I hadn't had a beer in a couple weeks, so I didn't know if I was just, you know, beer deprived. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that I really like it. So let's give this a little little taste. I'm all in. Shiner. Black lager. That's what it is. So I, I like this. So I'm in with that. So now, let's get to it. Let's get these grains. I'm so hungry. I'm going to get a little bit of this turkey tail on there. Let's move him back here. Let's move him back there. And let's get some greens, which are cooked perfectly. Give me a couple more of these radishes. Okay. And I want a little bit more greens. Just a little bit. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but my stomach is growling. I am so hungry. That garlic. Let's stir that up a little bit. I want to make sure I get some of everything that I put in there. There we go. Right there. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Let's do some of our last minute sweet potatoes. Oh, those are nice. That syrup is nice and thick. That's nice. Get a couple of them out. Good and candy. See that? See how thick it is now? There we go. I'll get a couple of those. Go in on this dirty bird. 
Let me get a paper towel real quick. Just a little piece of one. I got my Franks out. There was a debate on Frank on Facebook whether it was a Tabasco or Frank's Red Hot. I I say Frank's Red Hot. Tabasco, it it's got some heat. It's okay, all right. But Frank's has heat and a very good flavor, and I think it just does wonders for a piece of chicken. Let me get a piece of get a knife so I can cut this chicken. Ooh, I think I want to go with the. Uh, I think I want to go with this big mammoth piece right here. I feel like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. All right. Let's get us a taste here. Yeah. Let me assume the position. Wait a minute. There we go. Let's give everything a fair share. I'm going to go in with the sweet potatoes first. I'm going to get that a little taste. Yum nummy. Mmm. 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 Mm. You know what? I might mess around and go with the boil method from now on. That's so soft and creamy. Mmm. You see it held its shape. None of the pieces, none of them fell apart. So I'm really glad that I decided not to uh, put it in the pot. Because if I had put it in the pot, it would have fell apart, you know, trying to move them around. But this way, um, you know, they came out perfect. The skin is still in place. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Mmm. That's good. Let me get this radish to taste. Like I said, I had some of these last night. Just raw. I just washed them and sliced a few of them and ate them with my burger. And I actually cut some of them real thin and stuffed them. Because I had some really thick bread. And I put another little slice in it and stuffed uh, radishes in there. Mmm. Oh, it's good. Yeah, you gotta get your veggies in. It's good. Now, let's get it green to taste. And a little bit of this turkey tail. Yeah, the, the turkey tail is, is smoked. And, um, so you're not dealing with a, a raw piece of meat. It, it has already been cooked for the most part. Let's see. Mmm. That's good. Get a little greens on here. Well, I tell you what, I'm the most valuable best friend I ever had. <laughs> now these are the the garlic. You see it still kept its shape. It's nice and soft. Mmm. And it's sweet. And it just melts like butter. It's creamy. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm loving the crunchy, the soft, the creamy. I, I like all the different textures of the meal. But let's, hold on, let's crack open this dirty bird. Hold on, let's, let's heat him up with a little Frank. Do him up right. Woo! Baby! Lyric, you play too much. Alright, let's. I'm gonna cut him open with this knife. Yeah, because I want to check to make sure he was done, because he was the biggest one. So I know if he's done, the rest of them are, are done. Like I said, you, you let it cook, and they're at the bottom. 
you know, and then they'll rise to the top and, and that sizzling will start to get kind of quiet and it'll get more and more quiet. And you also have to turn the fire down. So that was one part that I forgot to tell you is that when I first put that in and we heard heard the water dancing on it and I put the, the first put the chicken in, that fire was still relatively high. But then once uh, it started to cook, I would say within five minutes or so, I went ahead and turned it down a little bit. All right, and then as that fire got a, the, the 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 sizzling went down a little bit lower, you can cut it down a little bit lower too. But uh, for the most part, it's over. It's over at that point. You you're you're pretty much done. And you take it out, and like I said, you let it sit for about ten minutes or so, and it'll continue to cook. Oh, it's so good. It's perfect. It's perfect. I couldn't have did a better job if I tried. This is good right here. Mm. Y'all, please take the time to learn how to cook. I cannot stress that enough. Mmm. Take the time to learn how to prepare yourself a good meal. I mean, there's nothing more lovely than to be able to share this particular talent with a loved one or a dear friend. Because, uh, you know, we, ha we have to eat. And they say you are what you eat. So make sure you take the time to learn how to cook yourself a decent meal and take it to that next step. And, Read up on it and, and learn learn about it. I mean, eating is a <laughs> is a major part of our of our existence, and is one of the things that um you know they don't really teach you a lot of. If you didn't take a cooking class at school, it's not something that um, is emphasized, and it's kind of weird because we said eating is how we survive. You know, they teach you how to go out and make money but they don't tell you how to how to prepare it and we live in a different generation where uh, women are not strapped to the kitchen men can cook too um, but you would I, I would just think that cooking would be a called required class <laughs> but anyway um, thank you for watching and um, I'll be back soon. I got a lot of things going on. I'm busy and my schedule is all over the place and un, uh, it's not nailed down. So I'm not in a comfortable position because I don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. But it is sort of exciting. So, uh, you know, I had to go ahead and cook on Sunday so I'll have something to eat during the week. But um, you all take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And you know I got to say it. And above all things, keep a lyric in your heart. Till next time.